Thank you for showing up on the rain, you know? It's actually not that bad compared to some places, right? So um, I'm sorry if there are some people that wanted to be here today but couldn't because of the weather. And um, um, there are some people that may be running late, you know? Um, generally, except for a certain um, very um, controlled, maybe what we ceremonies called impairments, and it's okay to come late, you know? So I just know some people are like, it always breaks my heart if somebody says, well, I came five minutes late and I, I didn't feel I could come in, you know? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> that's fine too. Like, I'm not encouraging people to come late, but, uh, uh, you know, please don't. <laughs> uh, in general, uh, if you made the motivation to get here and you know, there are accidents and trains and things. And some of us like leave the house and then we go, oh, I forgot something. And we got to drive back, right? So it's okay. <clears throat> so I'm, I have this wonderful ability to see like on the here, you know, um, who's a little bit who's listening in. So that's fantastic. And um, they're waving. Maybe you can see. So that's really nice. <clears throat> Overall, um, I uh, try to hold the view. Um, sometimes we, uh, in Tibetan called, uh, you know, Zogchen, um, complete, you know, great completeness. So um, I'll be saying some things that might uh, refer to that um, because uh, even though we have to start at the bottom of the mountain, we also have to realize that um, we take the view from the very top of the mountain also, right? So because there are some people that start um, and they go, I, I'll, I'll never reach the summit, right? They get discouraged. There are some people that um, uh, they say, I'm, I'm holding on to the view in the wrong way. And so they, they never actually um, descend to the valley and help others. So we need to do both in our sangha, don't you think? Like that. <clears throat> Anyway, I want to say a few things about Losar. Um, uh, it's actually like, so it's like almost very close to um, Chinese New Year's, right? And they, um, the same, um, you know, it's the year that I think Wood Dragon, right? Mm. <clears throat> um, I meant to get a calendar from Fei Fei Lin. Um, my artist friend at a space in between, she did an incredible dragon, but um, she left for China today. So, but we'll bring it back. So, cause the year of the dragon will last a year. So we're good, right? Mm. Um, you know, dragons usually represent some kind of um, uh, change coming, don't you think? <laughs> uh, and uh, some kind of transformation like that. Um, and wood is sometimes, you know, expansive. So um, it's always good to have these positive images, don't you think? Because, of course, we know it could be a difficult year, right? Yeah, but the, um, the traditional ways of looking at New Year's and the year um, has all these symbols that can be very beneficial. Thinking of dragon, thinking of trees. <clears throat> In the Tibetan... Um, worldview to celebrate New Year's. Um, uh, there are labit ceremonies with offerings of barley and offerings of um, uh, fried bread, which is impossible to eat. It's almost a weapon. It's, it can be big like this. Kind of like French bread, like a baguette, but hard. Um, um, raising your prayer flags and extra um, Greetings of the teacher, greetings, family, greetings to um, 
sangha members, extra practice, lots of ritual things, right? <clears throat> we, we can do some of that gradually, right? But I always want people to get the view first, right? So, um, you know, sometimes we do have to take a helicopter to the top of the mountain and start with the view. So when we say, when we're looking at Losar New Year's um, and the lunar calendar, then uh, we really uh, want to be thinking like, uh, how do how do I keep my experience fresh? How do I stay? How do I stay new? How do I stay fresh mind? So you could say, uh, this is uh, a fresh year, natural, fresh, <laughs> or fresh wakefulness, fresh dragon, something like that. So when we think new, we always think a little bit like maybe product or something in the West. But it, the idea, the view is that it's it's fresh. Remember that it's fresh. So it's fresh. Um, and the other thing with um, time, uh, lunar time is uh, we're, we're kind of trying to do things, a lot of practices based on the phases of the moon. Um, here we do it online, on in person, do what's called Vajrasattva practice on the phases of the moon. So we're aligned with uh, generally the lunar calendar. Um, the overall piece, though, is we're aligning ourselves with sacred time. There's kind of work time and just calendar, Gregorian calendar time. But um, if we're doing uh, Vajrayana practice, then we're, as much as possible, trying to remember we're also doing sacred time. So when we do Kala Chakra practice, which we'll do this afternoon, I like to say, please, please be at Kalapa, Kalapa Court. That's the way Trungpa Ramshay called it. Kalapa means the right time place. Isn't that nice? Right time place. But earlier I said, you could show up a little bit late. That's okay. <laughs> so um, when we're thinking of the wood dragon year, we, we want to embrace the dragon, embrace the wood quality, um, and be at the right time in the right place in a fresh way. That's the inner practice. Sometimes I do like some rituals, and we can do them in, but... Um, some centers um, with primarily European Americans feel they have to do all the Tibetan rituals too, but we have our own things, you too, right? Besides, sometimes, you know, rituals and symbols can become, we, we're missing the point, right? Like that. So um, I, I, I like Christmas rituals in a way, even though I'm no longer Christian, um, but I tried to go to the heart of it, you know, like Scrooge kept Christmas in his heart, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> What's the real? But so, but doing some rituals, mostly here is meditative rituals like the prayers. But during during Losar, the next few week, and uh, then people generally do extra training and practice, right? So if, if you do a little bit of meditation, do a little bit more. And if you're doing 20 minutes, try 24 minutes. <laughs> Just a little bit more, okay? That, that's a low sort of thing to do. So the stretch. Stretching really brings us into the now, don't you think? When you're just doing yoga and we're stretching. When you're really doing some of the Tibetan yogas, which are very strenuous, like, you know, some of Krishnamacharya's yoga or Astanga yoga or Iyengar, like, it's really hard to be anywhere else when you're doing these. Anybody have done, like, real heavy do Iyengar kind of stuff? Yeah, you know what I mean, right? You know, you can't, you, it's hard to be anywhere else. You're definitely there. <clears throat> um, the other important part of Losar, which we're experiencing right now is the water element. Water um, in the Vajrayana tradition is cohesion because drops get close together, they want to 
they want to join, right? So it, it is flow, but it's cohesion, the aspect of water as things interestingly stick together. So uh, a big part of uh, traditional New Year's practice is um, we make offering to the Nagas, the serpent spirits, uh, and that look um, kind of like um, mermaids and mermen, right? They have snake bodies and upper bodies, um, and they control the the weather and the water. So there are a lot of Naga practices that people do, and then they do we do this, uh, lasangs, which are smoke offering practices. So these are indigenous the smoke offering practices to the Himalayan region where you're building a fire and then you're putting juniper or other things and it creates smoke and then you're making offerings. A little different than traditional fire puja because the point is to make smoke. But um, now, you know, we're a little more like uh, environmentally conscious or something. So <laughs> we shouldn't do lots of smoke, but I like them. So uh, we're relating, particularly from a fresh perspective, as we're always relating with the elements. So the view always contains um, relating with earth, uh, the earth element, the water element, the fire element, the wind element, the space element, and awareness or consciousness, right? Because we are the elements. But the elements aren't solid, the elements are streaming. So. That's difficult. Does anybody know how like people say, well now now it's streaming on Netflix? Stream streaming means you can pick it up anytime, right? Like that. I don't know how the technology works, because my mind's still back in like somebody's got to turn on a projector, right? Or you have to look at a photo. So Buddha Dharma says actually things aren't like photos or even like uh frames in a movie, there things are streaming. It's an interesting concept, you know, right? Things are experienced, the way things actually are is streaming. So they're they're not fixed. Like we we can fixate through concepts, but we we think that then that's the way things actually are, but it's streaming. Do you like that word, you know, streaming? Mm -hmm. So the Buddha used that word early on say um to talk about someone that was kind of getting it they say oh that person's a stream enter right you've entered the stream right the flow so um we're going to have some people that are uh entering the stream entering the path so that's really um, something we're going to do in a moment <clears throat> oh and the losar maybe we can for next we can have a few little offering ceremonies or something, but um, symbols can can be distracting if you don't have the view. Do you agree that we can have empty rituals? If you don't have the view, then um, they become uh, performative magic. Like you think if you do it, then something's going to happen, right? I like, actually, I like performative magic, but I don't, I don't, um, you know, just in general, like I like magic shows and thinking magically, like if this, if you do this, then something mysteriously it will happen somewhere else. Does anybody else like that? I like that stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, if that's the whole part of the practice, then you won't be able to see the view or maintain the view. You'll be thinking, well, we'll we'll do these kind of rituals and automatically something will happen. Sometimes Dharma is presented that way, like um, you take refuge or you do a ceremony and then um, no matter what, you won't get bad karma or fall down to the lower realms, right? People have heard that or something like that. No, you can still be a complete idiot. So, um, Nothing we do is is really performative magic. It's fun to talk to the inner child in us because then we go, oh, okay, great, because it helps sometimes get people to do things and alleviate initial doubt, right? You just say, just trust it'll work. But actually, everything takes uh, awareness. 
So it's all streaming and that includes awareness. So actually things don't work if we're not paying attention. Do you agree? But attention can be huge. Like our heart's paying attention, but it doesn't have the kind of mind that's, you know, thinking about, you know, politics, right? It just wants to be alive. So that's mind too, right? Heart mind. So I would like to suggest for Losar and for people that are doing meditation um, um, to always meditate from the heart mind here. I, I like neuro Buddhists and neuro kind of mindfulness stuff, but they're always thinking brain, right? It's going to limit your your um, uh, experience by just we're just thinking mind is up here, right? I'm not saying it's not here too. From our point of view, it's all over, but the the center is here, a hard mind. So then the emotions and the um, inside isn't separated. That makes sense. The idea that there's like, we all have it, like somehow we're kind of behind our eyes looking out. Does anybody have that experience? It feels that way, doesn't it? So Buddha Dharma says, actually, that's a complete, that's delusion. There's somebody there, but it doesn't it doesn't work that way. We're not like a little mini me inside looking out through our eyes, right? So um, but it feels that way. It's it's somewhere behind there, you know. So when when we're meditating from that point of view, like you're looking down on your breath or you're, you know, just kind of um, trying to be mindful and you're thinking mind up here, then um your experience will be limited, right? So if you're, uh, you're just a little bit, even physically, so from a heart chakra, then uh, you're going to have a different experience, right? Because the visualizations um, will come from the heart instead of, the, you know, kind of the brain center, and it will be different, right? People say they have a hard time visualizing things. I say, you you know, you're you're thinking it's coming out of here, but it comes from here. That makes sense, right? Yeah. And when we're looking, um, we have a lot of paintings and everything so that people get support. So that the inner visualization is, but um, the danger is, you know, we like to sit with the eyes open, but um, but not always, but lots of times just sitting eyes open. But if you're kind of trying to know what's going on through your eyes, which is very strong in this culture and maybe human beings in general, then uh, you're going to have a limitation. Whereas uh, when you're sitting, you, like you're you're where there there are colors and forms, but um, you you're in a safe place. You don't have to be thinking like, well, the rug's a little bit off and. Those, those benches are not lined up. You know, you don't have to, the heart mind's not going to be doing that, right? And then the meditation will be totally different because in this culture, we're so judgy, not paying attention correctly. Well, yeah, we don't, but you're not going to correct it up here when it, you come down to Rigpa, when you come down to heart mind, you know, Yeshe, she means awareness or deep knowledge, then then um, the practice takes a different kind of sense, right? Mm. I just thought I'd give a little teaching. Is that too much? Mm. Okay. Also, when, when we're sitting, uh, uh, sometimes it's good to actually, you're sitting in your couch or chair and you prop something behind your back. So people say, is that cheating? And I go, no, that's not cheating. We want to experience what it's like to just be totally supported, right? So sometimes like pillows over here, then you could have a cat on your lap or your dog, right? So, so shamatha with complete support, because people go, what's well, shamatha with support? Does that mean, you know, you have to look at like an object that's not moving? In a way, that's true, but actually you, you want to actually feel like, wow, I can just kind of get propped up here in my arms and a cat, whatever. Um, but 
then you, you want to experience your meditation from different asanas too. So sometimes just, you know, sit, like a few people are just sitting on floor ground, right? So that feels a little bit different when you have like a, you're, you're sitting flat on the pillow, but you're still your, your own backbone, right? So that's ground. And then, then this edge. So I do this in my own time, you know, like it's important sometimes whether you're a chair or like to really like on the edge, like you feel like you're on an edge, like you're almost, you know, like on the racer's edge, which is a little different experience too, right? This kind of sitting flat on the cushion and then then there's this kind of like, you you feel that balance very acutely if you're maybe just on the edge of your cushion or edge of your chair, right? If we train to that, then you're going to have um, much more ability to have um, what in Tantra, that streaming experience, right? Because you're not falling over, but you're surfing. So my students like times ask me, I said, no, it's it's like, an infinity pool or being on the edge, it's surfing, right? I want you guys to have that experience. Then it's also necessary at times to like uh, do a walking meditation or do like a leap, you know, like you're just ready to jump. So it's actually that feeling of flying like that. So there are flying meditations where, you know, people are, um, <laughs> it takes a lot of work. So, you know, uh, where they they can they can just jump up in full lotus, people. Then now everything's on the internet, so you might as well talk about it, right? People have seen that. Who's seen that? You've seen that, yeah. So and then you come crashing down. Um, so it, it's uh, it's not so much to fly, but to like, you know, um, you know, jump start. We call it like that. Um, but we do need that experience of really stepping stepping into the unknown, right? Like jumping a little bit, which is different than flying. I like to fly, but the the jumping, and then finally, uh, in tantra, we have want to even in shamatha, you want that experience of of being embraced, right? So that also can be uh, just a basic meditation experience. So um, uh, some people have a teddy bear or a cat, or you have a partner, and you can do that. Then finally, there's there's walking. Walking is a really interesting. I haven't done walking meditation that much because it's raining, but that's actually quite advanced practice. We used to do a lot of walking meditation here, didn't we? Should we do it again when it warms up? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually very profound, you know, because we have to alternate, and Tantra is about alternating current, not direct current. You know, you have to do this. Very confusing. That's why we're screwed at. We know how to walk, but you know, we don't know how to like, we're not good at alternating. We're, when we're screwed up in some sorrow, we're being like this. But you do? Okay, good. Deb. Okay, that's good. Yeah, some, some of the groups. We don't have a, we're not doing specifically a walking class right now, but that's good. Yeah. We used to walk around the park and yeah. Yeah, thanks for you know, speaking up for walking. Yeah. Okay, so I'm being very traditional. Teachers always supposed to give some teachings, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a group of people that um, are uh, participating in what we call entering the path. So. Um, We've done that how many times? One duck, how many times we've we done it? Maybe three times? Yeah. Um, uh, I thought that it would be a really good idea that if people, they're making commitment to be here and participate, but you don't have to like um, become a Buddhist. <laughs> and, you know, there's, so I think that's important to like, um, to try things out for a while, it's just saying, right? Like, I think when you go to like a, a gym or something, or maybe even an apartment, you should get three months free rent, right? 
<laughs> or go, you know, a club like, you know, if they do that at the first of the year, like one month free or something. So just a little aside. So uh, my my bougie club, Arden Hills, closed down. So uh, then Johnny okay. Del Norte, a little club. So got two free months, right? December and January. Confession, like I didn't go either month. Isn't that weird? That's a psychology because now, now I've got to pay for it. Oh, I got to go to the gym. It's crazy, you know. But so entering the path, it, it's open and free, but it also means like a commitment. You're going to, we're going to show up and do something. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to uh, ask people to come up, but I'll, I'll read from this first. I can't remember how I did the ceremony last time. Maybe Susan does, but it's different every time. Right? One by one. Yeah. Oh, I like one by one. That's that's then people really have to like be on the spot a little bit. But um, I'm, I'm going to read from we uh, the um. Brochure here say uh, it says welcome to Lions Row where we learn to enrich our lives exploring new practices and ideas without rejecting where we come from. That's important. So I get worried when people go. I I've been doing this, you know, doing something for years, and now it's all crap, and now I want to see you guys, and that worries me a little bit. So I, we're not here to um, reject family or friends or or whatever our upbringing was, we're meant to clarify it and integrate it, but you can't really throw out your past. Can anybody do that? If you can, let me know. So then this, um, there's a line here, uh, your Dharma job is. So the idea was that um, people think about how they'd like to contribute to helping out here. You know, so I, I just kind of like that idea. And um, we've had some really, we're, we're devising a, a very interesting form of um, Bajra cleaners and Dharma jobs, right, Bill? It's, <laughs> I don't fully understand it, but it's based on baseball. Yeah, something like that, you know. <laughs> so... That's one of my favorite monologues. Who said who's on first? Yeah, so we're showing our age a little bit because we're watching that. <clears throat> then essentials. So community, becoming involved in our community and the community around us. Discipline, making commitments to the practice of meditation, health, and well-being. Transparency, showing our authentic selves, opening up to vulnerability to support each other and relate to one another, and service, helping others in many ways. So community, discipline, transparency, and service. They, they can be just words, but um, uh, I like to be reminded of what I'm doing every once in a while. So, And then this really, this really nice photo. Um, this metaphor, right? Yeah. Hmm. So I have like uh, uh, a number of names here, and may maybe one at a time is good to come up and say hi. You know, I was I was even kind of fantasizing this morning. It it'd be kind of interesting if someone's like an extrovert. You know, you could say like a little bit like why this is an important day for you. One minute. Can people do that in one minute? Yeah, why not? You know, just say something. You know, this is the lion's roar. We, we need to say stuff, you know, speak up. Um, so the pers first person on my list is Max. Where's Max? Hi, Max. We're still doing a little ritual because it's just fun. Get these katas and 
make offering. Yeah. Like that. Uh, the nice thing about uh, the kata offering uh, is it is essentially a, a dharma thing, meaning it's a gift exchange. Uh, it's, it's very Indian. Like Indian is you offer a gift to the gods, the deities, your employer, and what's neat about our tradition, and then we give it back. Isn't that nice? Yeah, you get it back. <laughs> so um actually if you, you keep this and and think of something you want to contribute but then you can let my dharma secretary patty know okay max and do you want to say anything about what this day means to you yeah. for me is is the start of a journey of a new path it's kind of like a a neural pathway mm -hmm. uh a new a new journey a new path to community uh to service put it closer uh and so for me it is um very special uh i've been coming to the meditation classes and uh, there are some folks here who are also part of those classes so it is a connection uh to uh, following this journey that i've always had is to have a community to have peace and well-being in in my past is um, a nonprofit for many, many years. So it's to be of service to others. Um, and it's a journey that is not just from the inside out, but it's also uh, being part of, of a wonderful group of people. Thanks, Max. Yeah. Yeah. So feel free to take a seat. We won't make you stand the whole time. Betty, come here. So like, I can't read your... What is that? Oh, Jenica. Yeah, where's is Jenica here? Oh, good. There you are. Uh -uh. Thank you. Yay. And then I'm going to give you this as a reminder. And then do you feel like saying something? Yes. Yeah. You got to hold it real close. Yeah. So entering the path means a lot to me. Um, it's kind of my way of putting myself on the spot. I've been really good at hiding behind taking care of others and making sure they're well cared for on their journeys. And this is an opportunity for me to really consciously step into my own journey and no longer try to hide by caretaking others along the way. And um, in doing so, I feel like I will show up much fuller in those relationships and also add to the richness of my past and expand upon it and also experience a lot of new freshness in my life. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's cool. all. You're on, Magdalene is on, and then Jim Cove, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Super, yeah. And fill it out. <laughs> Hi, yeah. So entering the path for me is another step in the right direction. Um, connecting more with myself and a community and just beyond that, everybody and all things. Yay. Junko, yeah, you're on. Thank you. Patty, can you like they're, they're not here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Here's this. Yeah. You can say something if you have a mic. Um, 
so I'm coming to Dharma Center for last four or five months. A little closer. Um, so um, for meditation, and it's been helping me to the point that I finally can work on my art after seven years of unable to express myself for um, due to the shock. So um, I'm really looking forward to learning more and maybe contribute to the community through my art expression. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Jerry, are you are you also? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, some it'll help you actually. You okay? Yeah, slow's good. Turtles win the race. Yeah. Yeah, gonna have a Dharma job. Yeah. Do you wanna say something? I'm not sure what to say, except I'm very happy to be here and looking forward to this discipline, pulling all of the things I've done in the past together yeah. and making it for now. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You got it, yeah. Um, it has the day down here, so um, people can remember. Um, I need these kind of things, you know. When all our teachers come, I, I always save the. Um, the publicity things. <laughs> so like, uh, otherwise I'd forget, you know, totally like, when was Jadarimshi here? Was that, you know, so I look and then, wow. So, um, you know, sa saving these a nice, uh, sometimes like um, brocade, but I think you gave me some brocades when you showed up. So I'm gonna maybe give one back to you, not this one, but you know what I mean? So. You know, Jerry shows up and like, hey, I've got all this stuff, but I may give some back to you. That'd be so funny. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now we're going to do um, the refuge ceremony. Hi, uh, James. It's great to see you. Calling you out. Is that okay? Best, yeah. <clears throat> so do do the um there's uh what I call it a refuge sadhana that um I put together that I think is on the um on the screen, right? that we can uh, do. Um, this is very traditional where um, uh, we uh, visualize uh, what's called the merit field, the, all the different beings and Buddhas and your teachers and me and then uh, in front of us. And then we say, I really need help. And then they basically say yes. So it's, requesting support and getting support, right? Getting blessings and support. Um, many of us that had difficult childhoods or even difficult adulthoods um, didn't feel like support was available, right? Or when we asked, it was denied, or we didn't, you know, didn't even think of it, right? Um, so sometimes it's hard to ask for support. And this is a... Um, a a way we've kind of made it into a meditation, right? So um, the support comes, and based on the support, then we have the strength to meditate and to um, uh, 
know, be a benefit to others and realize interdependence. So in the um in the sadhana here, well we end with um uh taking the five precepts. Um people can take it, you know, take refuge again in their hearts, even though they're not formally doing it. So people can read out loud like that, even you know, you can do a test run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> so this one, this one, uh, we typed it up, uh, I'll get there, but it's, I'm undertaking the precept of refraining from intoxicants, so, uh, and the one I have, but maybe this one says alcohol, but um, at my recovery group, or our recovery group this morning, the show of hands in this, no, everyone likes saying intoxicants instead, of, you know, because not everybody's thing is alcohol, some of it's, you know, like, you know, knowing what the royal family is doing or something, you know, it's like, really? So I don't know what will happen when we get to the screen. <clears throat> anything from Dharma point of view that anything that really uh, gets, um, uh, you know, what discourages us from uh, keeping an open heart, keeping bodhicitta is something that we're going to work on and see as kind of in a sense, an intoxicant, right? So sometimes uh, teachers, you know, just focus uh, and say, you know, whenever we lose awareness, we lose the view, we call it an instruction, and uh, in effect, we've been intoxicated by the Maras or that demon of ego, something like that. So <clears throat> uh, the precepts can be, um, you know, formulated in, practiced on different levels. But um, there's no Dharma police, you know? So people need to know, like, when you're taking the precepts, um, you're basically saying, I'm going to pay attention to my own karma. Right? <laughs> you know, it's like, the, there's there's no, uh, there really is no cosmic Dharma police either. In our tradition, there's just karma. You will realize or you will I experience the result of your motivation and the cause, right? There doesn't need to be any kind of, you know, things above that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So that's why the Buddhists only teach, you know, we can't erase karma. So it's interrelated. We're all interrelated, but at the same time, we're inter independent, independently interdependent, right? Okay, so do we have it? We, we there's this Buddha slightly like uh, off kilter a little bit, so maybe that's okay. You know, so that is just as you know that is when you're talking to Tibetans, that is like the Buddha's touching the ground. That's called a refuge Buddha, like that. Okay, let's see if okay. So let's start. Visualize your father on your right side and your mother on your left. Surrounding you, imagine the innumerable sentient beings of the six realms. Realize that all sentient beings are your kind mothers of past and future lives, and that they suffer just as you do. Then generate deep compassion for them and think, I must attain the high state of Buddhahood in order to help all these beings. Now that you have produced a special virtuous mind, visualize the field of assembly Imagine in the vast sky before you a jeweled throne, which is high and wide, supported by eight great lions. Upon it is a cushion that is a mandala of multicolored lotus, moon, and sun. Seated upon this is your own teacher appearing as Shakyamuni Buddha. His body is the color of purified gold, and he has a crown protuberance upon his head. His right hand is touching the earth, and his left is in the gesture of meditative equipoise. Upon it is a bedding bowl filled with the nectar of blessings. His body is beautifully covered with the three saffron colored of robes of a monk. He sits cross-legged in the middle of an aura of light. In his heart is Vajradhara Buddha, and in Vajradhara's heart is a blue hong radiating light. Behind Shakyamuni Buddha is another lion throne with a cushion of lotus, moon, and sun, upon which Vajradhara is seated, surrounded by teachers belonging to the lineage of the blessing of practice. On Shakyamuni Buddha's right is Maitreya, surrounded by teachers in the lineage of extensive deeds. 
and on his left is Manjushri, surrounded by teachers in the lineage of profound view. In front of Shakyamuni Buddha sits your gracious root teacher, just as you see him when receiving his teachings. He is surrounded by the teachers with whom you have a religious connection, those in direct lineage from Buddha down to your own root teacher. Encircling them are first the assemblies of Buddha devas, and then in turn the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, self-enlightened ones, hearers, heroes, heroines, protectors of the Dharma, and other wisdom deities. In front of each, on a jeweled stand, their own religious teachings appear as volumes of scripture whose nature is light. Inconceivable manifestations of each of the assembly radiate to the ten directions, subduing all sentient beings according to their capacities. Envision that the entire assembly is gazing at you with great joy. Then recite, I go for refuge to the Buddha. Sincerely reciting this prayer causes streams of nectar to flow forth from the bodies of all the Buddhas, including Vajradhara and others. As these streams enter the bodies and minds of yourself and all other beings, they purify everyone from all defilements. After considering that the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of the Buddhas have entered you and all others think, we have come under the protection of the Buddhas. Then recite, I go for refuge to the Dharma. Sincerely reciting this prayer causes streams of nectar to flow forth from the scriptures. As these streams enter the bodies and minds of yourself and all others, they purify everyone from all defilements. After considering that the blessings of the Dharma have entered you and all others think, we have come under the protection of the Dharma. Then recite, I go for refuge to the Sangha. Sincerely reciting the prayer causes streams of nectar to flow forth from the bodies of the assemblies of wisdom beings, protectors of the Dharma, heroes, heroines, self-enlightened ones, hearers, and bodhisattvas. As these streams enter the bodies and minds of yourself and all others, they purify everyone from all the defilements. After considering that the blessings of the Sangha have entered you and all others think, we have come under the protection of the Sangha. All the objects of refuge then say, we are your protectors, refuge and allies, ready to deliver you from the sufferings of cyclic existence. As they recite this clearly, promising to help you, rejoice. Thus, with deep prayer and with tears pouring forth from your eyes and the hairs of your body standing on end, go for refuge. After you have gone for refuge in this way, go for refuge conjoining it with a generation of the altruistic aspiration for enlightenment. Just as the warrior in a fierce battle wishes to protect not only himself, but also his relatives and friends, so should you chiefly think of the needs of sentient beings. And recite, I go for refuge and tell enlightenment to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Sincerely reciting this prayer causes streams of nectar to flow forth from the bodies of all the members of the field of assembly. As these streams enter the bodies and minds of yourself and all others and purify everyone from all defilements, the bodies of all are transformed into pure, clear light. All merit, lifespan, and all the knowledge of both aspects of the Dharma are expanded and increased in everyone. <clears throat> Think, the blessings of the three jewels have entered myself and all others. Now, meditate deeply on generating the altruistic aspiration for enlightenment. A duplicate form of Shakyamuni Buddha enters your body and you become Shakyamuni Buddha. Rays of light emanate from your transformed body and strike all sentient beings who have been your mother and father, purifying them of their defilements and alleviating their suffering. Visualize the mantra in a circle around your heart. And this is the, I'll say out the mantra, so here. Tai ta om muni muni maha muni e so ha. So we do it 21 times, right? Tai ta om muni muni maha muni e so ha. Om ta om muni muni maha muni e so ha. Tai ta om muni muni maha muni e so ha. Tai ta om muni muni maha muni e so ha. Tai ta om muni muni maha muni e so Oh, 
Ayada, oh, Muni, Muni, Maha Muni, so ha. I'm think I'm establishing them in the high state of Shakyamuni Buddha. Hmm, good. <clears throat> Then we do precepts. We all recite. Having taken refuge, we pledge to uphold the five precepts in order to support our Dharma practice and the Dharma practice of others. We take the five precepts. I undertake the precept of refraining from killing. I undertake the precept of refraining from stealing. I undertake the precept of refraining from lying. I undertake the precept of refraining from sexual misconduct. I undertake the precept of refraining from alcohol and intoxicants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we recite. I acknowledge each and every misdeed. I rejoice in the virtue of living beings. I hold in my mind the thought of enlightenment and the Buddha. To Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, I go for refuge until enlightenment in order to fully accomplish the purposes of others. I will generate the aspirations for enlightenment. At the end of the session, envision a ray of light radiating from Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha then melts into the space between your two eyebrows. Imagine that you've received the blessings of all the field of assembly. So we're going to do a short meditation. Can we do, can we do one minute? Here goes. So a few things like um, when we say rest in meditation here, we've gone through uh, this long, not very long sadhana, but um, when you say rest in meditation, it doesn't really mean rest and like lie down on the couch. It means really don't don't stray from the meditative state. So this this at this point, it's not like now I'm going to meditate, right? <laughs> this point, this style, this is like completion style. Now you're not thinking. Now I'm going to meditate. Uh, you know, like we don't have like we're we're just knowing like we we've had our meal, so we don't have to say now I'm finished with my meal, right? <laughs> so you're you're finished with your meal, and you're not hungry again. So you're in the bardo of meditation, right? You're not. You don't have to think, now I have to meditate. We just put that in there because that's the opportunity to, you know, experience the completely uncontrived view, right? So we don't we don't have to think like, now I have to generate the uncontrived view, right? We don't have to do that. Then we're just then it's complete, right? It's really nice. Then you don't feel like things are still alive and active, but it's like your heart pumping or your breathing. You're not saying now my heart's beating, right? <laughs> because we do sometimes have to have intentional meditation. Now I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do this. But the point of doing these practices is so that uh, you you do this. Um, I call it like a meal, like a soak offering, uh, sadhana almost. It's so fulfilling that you just naturally, um, you know, you're sitting there at the table and 
you don't have to say that was great i'm finished you just like it's just there right so we're not going like okay now i got to rest in meditation cuz it's happened there's 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 nowhere else to go there's no room you don't have to be anything else like that like that right completion stage or you know it's a um uh very completion so chen like that right that makes sense doesn't it hard to do isn't it isn't it hard to do yeah maybe <clears throat> then then we have to recite after generating this superior aspiration i will cherish all sentient beings and perform the beautiful highest deeds of enlightenment may i achieve buddhahood to help all sentient beings so when we do this we you know um this this is spontaneously coming uh out of uh you know that emergent uh display of the natural state this is not like i you know whatever your personal name is i'm generating you know this is this is from uh, absolute buddha uh nature state right so your heart and your breathing doesn't say now i'm going to beat right it's just doing its job right so when of course we're using the personal pronoun there um because we're saying you know we're saying it but at this point we we don't own anything it's weird we are it but we don't own it do we rent it even maybe <laughs> so this is coming out of uh the i that says i will cherish all sentient beings is is not the um the i that says i don't like donald trump and i like joe biden or something <laughs> i don't like joe biden like, you know so it's not that i it's not the discrimination i capish mm. so this is a very complete practice so people say well what do i do now what practice do i do well so there are many practices but uh once in a while or even daily or whatever you want to do you should if you take a refuge then you can do this practice it has guru yoga in it um it has uh the mantras in it, it has the visualization in it and i'm presenting it from a uh, highest yoga tantra point of view right like that so um you can use it that way and if you forget what i've said then you can come meet with me and ask me <laughs> cuz there was no recordings very few recordings of my teacher when i was studying and then i just had to go ask again so that that's okay to do that all right now so we have a few people um mm. oh, where's john there you are you're first Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is better than kneeling down there, don't you think? <laughs> so now we're being very traditional. So you're going down on your right knee, but you don't have to do it if you're like have bad knees. But you you're doing really well. So we're making this short, but do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Are you over twenty one? I am. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we. Uh, of course, Manasseh, you're shaving your whole head, but um, you got such great hair, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that with anybody. 
You can take a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, good. <clears throat> so this booklet has like the creed and five precepts, the eight twelve noble path, the four noble truths, the four seals, the four measurables. The list. The list. So the uh, Dharma name is Yeshe Chopo, which Yeshe, of course, is um, primordial wisdom or awareness. That's my lineage name. And then what you get. And then trouble like flourishing of the Dharma like that. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, thank you. Let's applause. <laughs> There's no applause in traditional Tibetan setting, but we can do that. You know, it's a good idea, I think. Mm. Mm. Where's Linda? There she is, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Know the questions? Do I know what I'm you doing? You know what you're doing? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's actually a good question. You know, actually, sometimes they also ask, Are you here of your own free will? That's important, right? There's never, there's, there's can't be compulsion. So, your own free will. You, yes, you want to be here. Yes, I do. Yeah. Are you over 20 or 21? Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> may, may I symbolically? Okay. <laughs> I I should have gone to like you know school. I, I really like cutting hair. You know. <laughs> okay. So um. Yeah. So um. You have the name, Yeshe Tekchen. So, um. Tekchen. One time I had Connor look it up. You know. Didn't I do that? No, I thought I did. This is a typical thing. The teachers they give you they give you one word and then you gotta do a whole essay or look it up or something. But it means like Mahayana, right? The great vehicle, sometimes translating. But that doesn't say enough, you know. So uh, really we should say like Mahayana means incomparable vehicle. Like everybody's included. That's really hard practice, right? So there's a big jump from Hinayan or just wanting to be liberated individually to say, uh, we're all going together. You're that kind of person. You can say that, right? Absolutely. We're, yeah, we're all going together. You know, so, um, you know, we all don't, you know, like, hopefully it's a it's a big boat too, right? So, you know, maybe maybe there's some people who don't like that much. So we can we can stay up at the bow and they can be, you know, the stern or something, but still, we're all going together. We're not going to make it unless we all go together. That's the Mayana. Yeah, it's great. Hold on to that. Ciao. Yay. Hi, Dylan. You're on. <laughs> Oh, 
Are you here of your own free will? Yes. Do you know what you're doing? Yes. That's good. Yeah. Are you over 21? I think so. Good. It, because, you know, sometimes, like, not, you know, the, you see kids in the, uh, the Sarah J, they're really young, right? But they're, they can't take really full ordination until they're 20, you know, like that. It's good you're here. So, uh, uh, this is an important name, not not a not a rare name, but important. Yeshi Yonten. Yonten means good qualities. So, many times when we get depressed and discouraged, we think we don't have any good qualities, right? It's one of the most important things to remember on the Dharma path. Like, yeah, I'm acting like a complete idiot, but I, I do have all these fundamental Buddha qualities. They can't be destroyed, right? They, they're there. They might be ignored or covered over, but you know, they they actually can't go away. It's interesting. So continually remember that is important for all of us, right? So reflecting on our good qualities is not ego. It's just it's taking joy and like, wow, I'm a good person, you know. So like that, Omahun. Yeah, we did it. So, um, Patty, where where are the where are the little baskets for people? Oh yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you. Who said that? Yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Oh, my. Very good. All right, gosh, that was almost incomplete. Yeah. <laughs> so I um, uh, asked Patty to go get, um, we have uh, kind of a, um, do you find them? Yeah, I want you to go get them. Yeah. So, um, I think it'd be good to distribute it now. That the kind of a traditional thing is after someone's taken some ordination, then there's kind of a party, and then you give them a little gift. But a lot of you folks may need to go home, right? You're not gonna. I hope people can stay around like that. Um, so we put together some things, and then we also have uh, the sadhana, you know, to give. So. Isn't that nice? They're very clean and like that. So, so the nice thing is, you know, we generally don't get Dharma texts. You know, you don't put your coffee on them, and obviously stuff like that. Mm. So after this, I'm going to be sitting in the library for a little bit, and then having a meal with everybody. So I like that, and um. So if I haven't seen some people in a while, please come and say hi like that. So it's friendly. Mm. I've been at a lot of ceremonies where the Lama will say, we need some um, uh, saffron rice. <laughs> and then, where's the saffron rice? You know, so you're sitting there for like a half an hour, like, 
literally i'm not kidding that's how you know we try to you know we don't do that we're actually really on top of things you know but um uh is that is that specifically done as a training you know i like to think like okay that's an opportunity you know and so you're waiting the ceremony and you're thinking okay i told my partner i'd be home and then they're running out to get do we really need saffron rice oh, okay so why is there one blue let's just this uh, happens to be that way just happens to be okay <laughs> so let's Let's put these in here. God, what are they getting? Amazing. Whoa. Amazing. No Starbucks cards. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pardon me? Cards, what cards? You get them later. Yeah. We have more people to bring in. Yeah. Uh, can I make an announcement about that? The right. cards. Announcement? Yeah. Yeah. So those of you who don't know, there are cards for the people who have taken refuge um, in the library. So please sign them uh, and welcome our new members. Yep. Okay. Mama, will you allow us to do a cotta line after? Uh, sure. Thank you. If you'd like. Cotta line means, you know, people come up and greet. But if if people need to um, uh, take off or use the restroom, that's cool. It's practical, right? So one time, we uh, many years ago when we were practicing at Friends, maybe a few people here remember, we hosted the head of um, the head abbot of Mongolian Buddhism, right? And um, right in the middle of the talk, he said he whispered something to Geshe Dhamma <laughs> and just took off. I thought, oh, what's wrong? And then we had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so go ahead. With dedication? Yeah. Or, okay. Do the merits of these virtuous actions may quickly attain a state of a guru Buddha, Buddha and lead all living beings, beings without exception into, into that light state. state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig, Tenzin Jatso, please remain till samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver, a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of opportunist compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Songkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losan Drapa, I make requests at your holy feet. Thank you. Cut a line? Yeah, we can. Right. So let's go with Nix. Nix may say, waiter, chan, chan, race. Dream a campaign. Chan, gape, su, chan, song, kapa. Lo sang dra pe ja vla su wa de. Mig me se we te chen chen re zi. Dream a ken pe wa ho 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 Lo song drop a job lost Make say wait a chen chen raise a nice to see Jimmy. We're on the path together. song Lo song drop a javla su wadeb. 
Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, copper, lo, song, drop, a, shop, la, so, Mig me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, copper, lo, song, drop, a, jab, la, so, water. Mig me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, copper, lo, song, drop, a, jab, la, so, water. Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, kapa, lo, song, drop, a, jab, la, so, water. Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, kapa, lo, song, drop, a, jav, la, so, water. Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, kapa, lo, song, drop, a, jav, la, so, water. Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pe, su, chen, song, kapa, lo, song, drop, a, jab, la, so, Make me say, waiter, chen, chen, raise dream, make, and pay, wong, po, jong, pay, young, gong, chen, ke, pay, su, chen, song, kapa, lo, song, drop, a, jab, la, so, Omo araya pazaya na ayindi Om araya pazaya na ayindi Omo 